Israel og har virkelig fokus på Israel i dag. Jeg har med meg Danny Eriensson. Han har vi snakket om før, men han er fremdeles en central person i innvandringsspørsmålet. Og innvandringen til Israel den er like viktig og nødvendig som den alltid har vært. Vi vet at den demokratiske situasjonen her er kritisk. Og det er det ene, og det andre er det at jødene skal hjem. Det står veldig tydelig i Gudsord. Han leder en organisasjon som heter EFRA. En white report is for EFRA. Uh, we are uh, calling the Ezra because uh, it's uh, Ezra from the Bible uh, that uh, he came to Israel, he made Aliyah to Israel with uh, a lot of Jewish people at the time of the, t uh, of the temple and uh, our major uh, program today is uh, making Aliyah to Israel and we are follow this Ezra uh, as he brought the Jewish people to Israel and this time we also want to bring all the Jewish people to Israel. Okay. Um, you can read about him in the Bible. It's, he has his own book. Yeah. Um, the, han, uh, organisasjonen heter Ezra fordi de har tatt mål av seg til å kopiere den store profeten og den skriftleide Ezra i Bibelen. Han som var den første som brakte Israel folk tilbake til landet sitt. Og det driver Ezra også med. Um, how many people are working uh, under your umbrella? Today we have uh, 19,000 uh, people all over uh, around the world that uh, come into our activities. Uh, we're speaking today about the United States, about uh, Russia, Belarus, Ukraine, Germany, UK, France, and of course uh, in Israel. Uh, we are very proud about these numbers because uh, only about uh, 12 years ago, 13 years ago, we had only 500 people uh, that uh, came to our activities and uh, right now after 12 years we have 19,000 and uh, it's really amazing because every year we, we see that the number is uh, going up, uh, more and more people join our activities and uh, it's very exciting. Are they most of them uh, volunteers? Uh, more of them, uh, they are coming, to basically these people they are not workers, they are coming to, uh, to participate in our activities. Uh, this is activities about, uh, about Israel, about uh, Zionism, about uh, uh, Jewish identity, uh, how to celebrate Shabbat, Friday night dinners, uh, Jewish holidays and all these kind of things. Uh, we are bringing them also to Israel. Every year we are bringing around uh, 3,000 uh, people to Israel uh, for a short time, for a long time, uh, just to see Israel, to connect to Israel, to get in love with uh, the state of Israel. And uh, when they are coming back and they are participating in our activities, they want to learn more uh, about themselves, about uh, their Jewish identity, about Israel. And, uh, and basically we are pushing them to come here, not just to be at the tourism, but to live here in the state of Israel. Uh, han er veldig stolt av de 19 000, fordi at for fem, noen få år siden så var det bare 500, men nå har det altså utviklet seg veldig. Og mange av disse er uh, frivillige medarbeidere, og de jobber da i Frankrike og Tyskland, Ukraina, Hvite Russland, Russland og USA. Og det er veldig viktig for dem at de motiverer folk til å komme hit. Og de har et kjempemessig nettverk. Um, you have uh, all these activities. You are running this. Ok, so if we spoke about what happened about uh, 12 years ago and what happening uh, right now, so 12 years ago, I was the only person that uh, was involved with everything. But thank God today, we have uh, 25 uh, workers and uh, we have uh, more than 200 uh, volunteers. Uh, these people, th they are people that are uh, learning in the universities or they are studies and they have different jobs. They are lawyers and uh, economists and uh, and uh, they're doing their own business. And after they're finishing their work, 
that come into our uh, uh, centers and the uh, volunteers and they are taking care of the uh, of the activities because they are feeling that they are part uh, of this organization and they want to take this organization forward. Han fortsetter å fortelle om hvordan de har økt aktiviteten sine, og han sier at mange av disse frivillige er fulltidsarbeidere i vanlige yrker. Det er både advokater og økonomer og mange andre yrker, og så på fritiden så deltar de i etterlatt aktiviteter. This activity is you mentioned it, it's about identity and about religion. And about uh, about coming to make an area to Israel, it's uh, you know the what what we are doing basically we are finding the people in the social media. Uh, today the majority the majority of uh, the people that come into activities uh, they are coming from one activities to another. Uh, it's the same people that come into all the different organizations. Um, but we are speaking here about a lot, a lot of people that they are not going to any uh, Jewish activities, not to clubs, not to Jewish schools, not to anything. Uh, we're speaking about them in uh, in Russia. We're speaking about 90 percent. Uh, in the United States, there is also a very big amount of people that are not going to any Jewish activities. And first of all, we are looking and to find them in the social media. We are uh, tech uh, experts, uh, people that they are experts in media, to find them. And uh, and we are taking them. The first activity that they are doing, we are, we are taking them to Israel um, for a short uh, trip in order that they are going to learn about themselves, about their uh, Jewish identity, about Israel. And basically, we connect them down the time that that they are in Israel. We connect them to us, and in this time when they are in Israel, uh, we make them to get in love with uh, the state of Israel, and we uh, we take them to get in love with Judaism. And when they are coming back, they we are taking them to our activities, and we are making a different type of activities to them in order that each one of them are going to find himself in our uh, community and as you said the goal is uh, to continue teach them about their Jewish identity uh, to continue teach them about their religion to continue teach them about Israel and basically to push them to come back and uh, live here yeah, 90 percent av de, den jødiske befolkningen som aldrig deltar i noen aktiviteter i de landene de bor i. Og derfor så forsøker de nå å hente dem inn eh, via sosiale medier på internet, Facebook og alle sånne ting. Og det er, eh, vi lever i en, en ny tid, og det, eh, virkemidlene de er forskjellige. Men eh, i Etra så jobber de altså eh, i etter dagens krav, og de gjør alt de kan for å, å finne disse uh, jødene rundt omkring i verden, og motivere dem til å dra hjem til Israel. Uh, what is motivating you? Um, what is motivating me is... Uh, you is never, you never stop. Yes. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, I was uh, a long time ago, 15 years ago, in the uh, in the area of business, uh, I didn't uh, I didn't thought even that uh, I'm going to be involved with uh, any Jewish activities. Uh, what was important for me very much is uh, to make money and uh, and as much as possible. It's better for us. Uh, until I had a very personal uh, case uh, story in the in the army that uh, I was uh, I was in Lebanon and uh, I was in attack unit and uh, a very big uh, rocket came into my tank and uh, thank God with a very big miracle I, I uh, nothing happened and uh, at this time I understand that uh, there is a reason why I'm here why I'm alive uh, and there is something that uh, I need to do uh, to the to the world 
And then I wa was asked uh, to go to, to Russia and uh, to try to help to the Jewish pe uh, people there. I came to Russia and, uh, and I found out that after two months I succeeded to, inf in to, to influence very much on the people there. Uh, after two months, a lot of people made Aliyah to, to Israel. Uh, I connect a lot of people to their Jewish identity. And uh, I really see that this is something that uh, it needs to be done. Uh, after a few times that, uh, uh, that I was in Russia and in Beirut and Ukraine, I came back uh, to Israel and my grandfather uh, came to me and, uh, and I asked me, no, did you s do you speak Russian? So I told him, uh, yes, I'm speaking a little bit. Then my grandfather, he started to speak in Russian. So I told him, how do you speak Russian? So he told me, what you don't know, I'm from Belarus. I told him, what, you are from Belarus? I didn't know about it. Then I made the research on my about my family and I found out that uh, his uh, big brother, he was the head of the joint in uh, Moscow in uh, 1930. And basically at this time, he was the person that was responsible on taking all the Jewish people to Israel. Uh, his next brother, he was uh, also the head of the Zionist uh, religious uh, organization uh, worldwide, and he make sure to bring all the Jewish people from the rest of uh, the world. And uh, then I finally understood that, uh, that uh, the first time that uh, people asked me to go to Russia, there was a reason for that. Probably I need to continue my what, wa what uh, my family started to do in the 1930s. Det var en sånn typisk historie om Gud Kall og hvordan Gud leder mennesker. Han var på 15 år siden eh, i Libanon eh, i militæret, og en rakett traff den tanken han var i, og eh, mirakuløst så overlevde han, og han ble ikke skadet, og så begynte han å tenke at eh, kanskje Gud ville noe annet med ham enn det han hadde gjort hittil, for han sa at Inntil da så hadde hans mål vært å tjene mange penger og bli en rik mann. Men uh, han stoppet da med sitt vanlige yrke og reiste til, uh, til Russland. Og i alt overmål oppdaget han at hans bestefar kom fra Hvite Russland. Og hans bror igjen hadde vært skrev for en stor jødisk organisasjon i uh, Moskva som heter Dorm. Og dermed så ballet det på seg, og han fant plutselig at hans plass var eh, for å sørge for at innvandringen til Israel tok fart. Et uh, amazing, amazing story. Yes, it's, uh, yeah. it's really amazing. Yes. Uh, to find out only after that, that uh, you are basically someone send you to continue what you, you what your family start to do and this is uh, it amazed me so i understood that this is uh, where, where i need to be and this is what i need to do really ja det är er, er fantastisk historia om uh, om Guds ledelse kort och gott um, you have uh, you told me that uh, the state asked you to try to establish an organization in ukraine it's a very um, Central County at the time, this time. Um, how do you do that? Yes. Is it possible? Uh, yes, the, basically we understand uh, today we see that 45% uh, of the Jewish people that come in uh, to Israel uh, from all around the world are coming from uh, Ukraine, from Russia, from Belarus, from Moldova. And uh, there is still a lot of things to do. Uh, there is uh, still 850 thousand Jewish people that still left in uh, these places that can come to Israel. And I think that uh, in this time, uh, when we see that uh, Russia came into Ukraine, uh, I think that, uh, I don't think really that the Jewish people are going to suffer uh, from that. I think that the Jewish people are going to have uh, the same life like uh, the others. They're not going to suffer more. But uh, what I do think is that uh, the economic situation in Ukraine uh, is going to be, uh, I think, very bad uh, for the beginning. And uh, I think that this is what is going to push 
a lot of Jewish people to make Aliyah to Israel, if not in 2013, for sure in 2015. Um, we prepare for that. We prepare for that. We, we are uh, going to make about uh, 21 seminars uh, this year, 2014, uh, only in this area, uh, seminars for people who want to make uh, Ulim. We are preparing seminars that each seminar is going to be for 200, 300 uh, people uh, for a potential limb that wants to come uh, uh, to Israel. Um, we are working with the mayors of uh, different cities in Israel, in the Galilee and uh, the Negev. They need to prepare uh, programs uh, for this uh, Olim, and uh, we are sending them to Ukraine to meet with the people wha that wants to make Aliyah to offer them a job, to offer them a place to live, uh, to give them the all the uh, program, what they're going to do uh, during the time that uh, they're going to live in Israel. Uh, we know, we understand that um, people that make an aliyah to Israel, if they don't have uh, the job, if they don't have a place to live, uh, after here they can uh, go back uh, to Ukraine. And uh, we are thinking in advance about it, and uh, for, for this reason, we are asking to the mayors to prepare programs, go to Ukraine, speak with the people. If you want to make aliyah to Israel, and you meet the mayor of some city, and he's uh, telling you, this is the job that I'm going to give you, this is the apartment that I'm going to give you, so I'm sure that if you want to make uh, uh, aliyah to Israel, if you want to come to Israel, you are going to come, because if you are going to have some problem in different city, so you can go to the mayor and tell him, okay, you promised me to, uh, that you're going to, that this is my job, so where is the job? And probably is going to help you to find it. So um, we have uh, different uh, kind of programs that uh, we are running, uh, and uh, our plan for this year uh, is uh, to bring additional 1,300 uh, uh, people uh, to Israel and uh, we are very excited about it. Han sier at uh, 45% av alle som, in, som kommer til Israel, de kommer fra uh, Ukraina, Hvite Russland, uh, Moldova uh, og Russland, og um, derfor så jobber de veldig hardt der borte. Um, de skal i år ha over 20 seminarer, og han sier at hvert seminar uh, kommer det 200 mennesker. Jeg tror de har satt en slags grense på det, Eh, jeg sa at tiden forandrer seg, og eh, nå blir innvandrerne møtt med ferdige jobber og ferdige hus. Før så kom de bare, og så ble, det, ble de satt i mottak, og så ble det ordnet etter hvert. Men nå eh, driver de og jobber rundt med ordførerne i forskjellige byer, og ber dem simpelthen om å forberede, slik at de som kommer, han går rett inn i et etablert liv, og det er selvfølgelig avsynlig bedre. Um, are the mayors in this, uh, around Israel willing to take this uh, new immigrants? I think about uh, in Norway, we are not so eager to, to welcome them. Yes, uh, the mayors, uh, they are very eager to welcome them. First of all, the this is tradition in the, the set of Israel. We are welcome the Olim. We want the Olim uh, to come to Israel. Uh, I think also the mayor himself, because we are focusing on uh, the Galil area and the desert area, uh, where there is more Arabic uh, people than the uh, Jewish people, they need these people, this uh, Olim, to come to these places in order that um, there are going to be more Jewish people in this area and uh, that in order that the Galil is not going to occupy occupied by the Arabic people, not the Galil and not the, the Negev. So they need them very much and uh, we see that they are very interesting about it and they are sitting days and night in order to prepare these programs. Um, they are speaking with the different businesses to see what people want, if they want engineers, if they want doctors, uh, if they want economists, what, what they need. And, uh, and with this program, 
they are going to uh, to Ukraine, they are going to Russia, they are going to Belarus, and uh, they are going to Moldova. And we see that there is a very, very interesting from the people themselves, because every meeting, hundreds, hundreds of people are coming to see the mayors, to see the, the programs. They register, and uh, I think that uh, we are going to have a good result. So the mayors are going to the, these different countries. Yes. Yes. Jag har sett att ordförande runt omkring i Israel är er väldigt upptatt av att få invandrare att komma för att alternativet är er att araberna kommer och de reser gärna då till dessa länder vi nämnde för att fortälla om sina planer och sina möjligheter. Och det det är er ju ett fantastisk nytt en ny måte att se det på. Um, you talked about the Negev and the Galil. Are they um, important areas for immigration? It's uh, it's important uh, area for the state of Israel. Uh, the state of Israel, they want that this place is going to be stronger. Uh, today, the majority of the Jewish people are sitting in the center of Israel, and uh, we need we need people that sit that will sit in the Galil. We need people that will sit in the desert. We see that the population of the Bedouins in the Negev all the time it's uh, it's raising up uh, very much, and uh, in the end of the day, if the Jewish people are going not going to sit not in the Negev, not in the Galil, so what is going to be in the end that o- the Jewish people are going to sit only in the state of Israel? It's not going to be enough place for everyone, and uh, so we must have these places with Jewish people. Also in the Galilee, also in the Nile. Ja, det er den samme faren som mange steder, at uh, folk de søker seg til sentrene, og det fører til at uh, utkanten blir uh, uh, klar for uh, innvandring av uh, arabere eller palestinere. Og derfor så er det negative områder veldig viktig, der er det mye beduiner. Og det er viktig at de får befolket med, med jøder. Og det samme gjelder altså Galilea, som ligger oppe i Libanon og Syria. Eh, og det er mye fantastiske byer oppe der. Um, what about uh, the demographic situation in Israel, as it is now? The main issue is the uh, discussion about one state, two states. Yes. Uh, the demographic situation it's uh, it's very bad. Uh, if we're speaking uh, today also about the Arabic people that uh, living in the in the Western Bank uh, together with the Arabic people that live in in Israel, we're speaking almost on the same numbers of Jewish people and the Arabic people, and uh, it's really a big problem. But you know, if we're speaking about two states for. Uh, um, one state for us, one state uh, for uh, uh, for the Arabic. Uh, I'm re- really afraid that in the end of the day, when they're going to have the state, uh, they will have the option uh, to bring more rockets uh, to Israel. We just see uh, uh, about two two days ago that uh, the army the the army uh, catch a ship with a lot of uh, rockets that came from Iran uh, to Israel. We're speaking about rockets that can cover all over Israel. The the rocket was supposed to go to Gaza, and uh, and Gaza today that uh, you know it's uh, it's a state by themselves. Uh, they have right now the option to bring all of this uh, equipment, all of these uh, weapons, all of these rockets, and uh, and to send it into Israel. And this is a very problematic thing. Okay. So I think that the solution it need to be. Uh, not to state to one for us, one to the Arabic. I think the situation needs to be to bring more Jew- Jewish people to Israel, and then we are going to win with the demographic demog- thing. Da må det bli slutten på denne samtalen, den skulle gjerne vært mye lenger. Um, uh, det blir altså en enstavsløsning, hvis ikke så tror jeg det at uh, rakettene kommer til å fike over Israel hvis det blir to stater. Da sier vi tusen takk for at dere hørte på oss. Takk for i dag.